uh, every, almost every single streamer I know in either one of these categories wants to be in the other category. It's a grass is greener on the other side kind of thing. Where that is very true. Yeah, variety streamers like Soda Poppin wish that they could like just be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna stream, turn my brain off, just play some TFT, right? And just grind the ladder for eight hours. Or like, I just wish I could just open up Valorant and just like before I even start my stream, I already know everything I'm doing. And then people who grind games like Valorant or Apex or whatever are like, man, like I wish I could just like have the fun to just be like, I want to try this new game today. But like they know that they won't, the viewers won't follow over. You know, that's very true. Yes. So here's my theory. Uh huh. Why don't you just do both? Why don't you just have double the skill set? Streaming what? is a ridiculously competitive industry, and why don't you just have top point one percentile skills in entertainment in both of these categories? It's so easy. Uh, I mean, it's hard to retain audience that way. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's super hard. <laughs> like I would say, like these days, I can retain like. I don't know, eight, nine thousand doing anything, which is like pretty decent for a variety streamer. Box, box. I have all, COVID all I wish is work. to have a game I'm I can grind like Hearthstone again. You are our favorite streamer. But I just know once I start grinding Hearthstone and all my audience converts to Hearthstone viewers, eventually I'm gonna want to play something else. And oh, all the variety viewers are gone because they don't want to watch Hearthstone. It's uh, yeah, it's impossible. Yeah. Thank you, Choco. That's very sweet. Yeah, no, it's fucked. Uh, it's definitely like a we can't have everything kind of situation. Well, you also, could if you could somehow just stop caring about viewers, which is very hard. Also, I'm 30 years old. I feel like I'm smart enough to be successful in anything I do. What a humble person. And is that anything really going to be figuring out how to be an even bigger streamer right it's like if i've reached the 99.9th percentile am i going to dedicate the next five years to just get that extra 0.01 percentile or would it be better to use that time to reach like the 90th percentile in like screenwriting or like producing or like production company starting where there's so, so much more room to grow and learn and understand and like meet new people or it's like hey let's try and find someone i haven't met oh it's hard because i've met everyone and i know everyone you know okay i okay 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 all right i think i understand now okay so uh let me you might hear like repeated clicking just don't mind that uh that has nothing to do with this conversation. Okay. Okay. So, it uh, it sounds like you are in your quarter life crisis, which is really weird because having your quarter life crisis at age thirty implies that you're going to live to age one hundred and twenty. Maybe it's more of like a third life crisis. But anyway, I have a lot of the same thoughts that you have. I uh, recently I've tried to come to terms with: is there an amount of money that would make me happy? And I, I think there is. And then, um, yeah, sure, I could work on my stream and exceed that, or I could just do whatever I want, get that amount, and then go do whatever. The amount, the amount of like my real life that I've lost in the pursuit of money in the last year is actually like insane. And I, I almost feel like I would trade the amount of money I made this year to have my old life back. It's one of those I didn't realize how nice it was until it's gone kind of things. The, uh, yeah, I make about three times as much money as I did last year. But I no longer have a group of friends to like eagerly hang out with after my stream is over. I no longer count the hours until the end of my stream, like being like, oh my god, I can't wait to go play Conan with my friends tonight. Uh, now I just like stream because I have nothing else to do and because it feels very efficient. And then I stream in endlessly into the void. And then I finish my stream, I browse Reddit for three hours to quote unquote decompress, and then I go to bed a little depressed. Uh, I have money, but what's the point? Uh, it sounds it sounds like you're doing kind of the same thing. I uh, I would bet that there's an amount of money that makes you happy too. And yeah, you said screenwriting or something like that. You you already know you can make enough money doing whatever you want, and then I guess you just decide uh, if that gives you full fulfillment. I definitely get the vibe that you kind of want like 
to look cool in front of a very large audience. So a lot of other hobbies won't get you that. So I feel like at least for the next year or two, you'll still want to stream. It's hard to give that up. Once you've, once you've tasted the glory of the pog farm, it's really hard to give that up, man. To do something so cool on stream and the chat goes poggers and pog, I always hear pog. It's a drug. All right, I'm back from the bathroom. Did you say something? Yeah, so to wrap up what I was saying, uh, I think that if you were to... Wait, what? Anyway, yeah, uh, I think that you can... How, how much money do you need to be happy, I guess, is the question. You don't sound like someone who cares about being like a multi-millionaire. You seem yeah, like someone who just wants to max out a high score. I want to be a billionaire. Score. Oh. Like, functionally, what's the difference between like 8 million and 9 million. Um, Not that I have that much money. If you want the honest answer, uh, and don't ask me how I came up with this, uh -huh. it's 1 million. But do you think my life would be functionally different? No. But do you think my life would be different if I had 1 billion dollars? Yes, I think you'd be unhappier. What? You think I'd be unhappier? I think what you have to give up to get to that level of income would lead to you having an unhappier life. From, from my experience, the happiest people I know are people who like are pretty capable, but their priority isn't in money. And they just like they just like naturally make enough money to live because they're just good at things. And then they're they like have like random passions. Yeah, I'm talking. I about will the never be happy, and I've made my peace with that. What I will now will focus on is ambition and making a legacy. Happiness is gone. Happiness oh, no. is not for me. Oh God. Oh God. Okay, wait. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. We can we can fix this. We can open your brain and rewrite some of the code, and you 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 can be happy. Maybe. You're surrounded by a really toxic pool of people. And hey, you know, don't I'm feel popping like... off as Jake the dog right now from the show Adventure Time. Sorry, what? Oh, you're playing that game? Jake the dog, bro. Do you even know who he is? Yeah, he's the guy who's like sucking at something is the first step to being kind of good at something. Oh, I don't, uh, I don't remember him saying that. Um... I think when I think about death, I uh, I care about being happy more, but that feeling only comes late at night. <laughs> you know how you have your best ideas when you're in bed, and like, or in the shower. But as soon as you're in a position to be able to do something, you just get super lazy and don't think about those ideas. Sure. Yeah, I think that has happened to me. I don't know, I haven't had any good ideas recently, so I don't really remember the feeling. God, I'm gonna be such an aim beast in an hour. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I. Uh, so you, you just said you just said something really really big. You said you're never you've come to you've made peace with the fact that you're never gonna be happy, and that all you seek to do now is make a legacy. Yeah. Yeah. If you could think right now of something that would make you really happy, what would it be like? What could make you excited for life? If I can monetize the act of kindness. Oh God, money was the f third word in that sentence. Holy shit. <laughs> Okay, go on. If you can monetize the what? The act of kindness. Have you seen those videos where people give change to like a homeless person and film it for like social media? Uh, yes, I've seen Mr. Beast videos. Yeah, that but not exploitative. Now that, not to say Mr. Beast is exploitative, but like there's an exploitative element associated with like, for example, giving money to the homeless because and when then filming you do it. that, yeah, it's like, Yes, You're taking advantage of someone who doesn't really have a choice. Whereas Mr. Beast does it to like, like honestly random people, which doesn't come off as more ex exploitative. 
even though technically they need the money less than homeless people, it's because the fact they don't need the money that make, doesn't make it feel like, oh, he's like taking advantage of it. It's like, it's more of a random, it's like a coolness thing, you know? Yeah, I have very mixed feelings about stuff like um, recording, like filming yourself being a nice guy for views. Yeah. Okay, but I see. The truth of the matter is, is those videos do really well. And yeah. when they do well, they get more revenue. And like when there's more revenue, you can afford to do more things like that. So yep. it's kind of like perception wise, you're kind of like looked down on doing nice things or like showing yourself being nice because there's that like manipulative element of it. But there's also the actual benefit of doing something nice for someone and bringing like happiness even to the people who watch it. But how do you do that without it being exploitative while still maintaining the viewership and the sentiment behind it? If I can figure that out, I'd be very happy because that's the kind of content I would want to do. And then I don't want to just be like, let me go find a homeless person and give him some money and film that. Oh, um, okay. I have a great idea. Yeah, go ahead. Why don't, we, um, why don't we make a camp, a summer camp for streamers that are growing and aspiring talent that we believe in to grow and then we help them and give them the resources that they need to grow and put a camera on them a camp about uh, upcoming streamers and then we can we can vet the process and make sure we only get people that we really like oh camp of streamers i like yeah, that yeah. idea well, we'll name it camp of streamers <laughs> but how do you make money uh i mean it'll be you know it'll be on you, you get like the you get the sponsors Right, I'm sure there's a lot of really. Well, okay. If you want to make a, if you want to make ten million dollars, get an NFT sponsor. If you want to make five hundred k, get a regular sponsor. How much would you need to be paid to promote NFTs? I, uh, I, I've thought about this a lot. I. Uh, and the answer is, if I think that people would disapprove of me, I will just yeah. never do it, regardless of the money. I think like even if I had whatever money, like $10 million, if I knew that the people who once pogged at my TFT plays or my ribbon plays are now weird champing, I would just, I couldn't live with myself. So I, I wouldn't even be able to live with it. So I'll just turn what it down. What do you think of all your peers that are promoting NFTs? Uh, let's see. Uh, in general, not good. I... I wouldn't immediately judge them because there is like some cool technology behind the NFTs, but I think in general it's usually used in the, the form of a scam. Oh uh, yeah, I mean in this scenario it's definitely one of those like shady ones. Yeah, I would I mean, definitely they always say like, oh no, happy. our NFT is different, but it's always the same. Yes. What do you think about Dr. Disrespect starting a game company and their first game is just an NFT game? It's actually, I actually think that is so cool because he's going to lose so much credibility. Then when I make my game, everyone's going to be like, Pog, a regular game. He made me look really good in comparison. I'm really happy. Do you think it's going to affect him negatively in any way? Or do you think he's just going to keep doing what he's been doing because his audience will always support yeah, him? Yeah, I think he's too big to fail. But like, I think that was not a good idea. Uh, yeah. I'm very selfish. I only really care about myself and in the short term. I care about myself long term. And I care about others short term. So like this, like what, what he does is like whatever to me, like his career is whatever. He's, he's successful. He's going to stay successful. But him starting that game company uh, and having NFTs involved, like immediately, like one of the thoughts I saw in some of the Reddit comments, like, like, oh, take a look at like Box Box's game. It's just like a regular game. He just like likes making games. And I was like, they know, they remember. It made me feel very happy. It was very beneficial to me in the short term. But yeah, I would say uh, if my friends start promoting NFTs, I'd feel pretty uncomfortable. No. I don't know if I would, had the balls to like stand up to them, but I would just be uncomfortable in the in, behind the scenes. What if I took an NFT deal? Uh, I, in general, I like the way you think. I think you're quite a creative dude. I would probably ask you why you did it, and then I did it for a lot of money. Hmm. That would make me pretty uncomfortable.
But yeah, uh, I would say I, I've already exceeded the point that I, the amount of wealth I want to ac accumulate in my life. As in like, the amount that I make per month right now is more than I will need for the rest of my life if I could keep making this amount. So I no longer strive to like monetize harder. All I strive to do now is just like, come up with cooler creative ideas, even if it comes at the expense of revenue. That Mario Party stream, I'm so excited for it, but it's actually so hard. I'm like two months into planning it now. Mm -hmm. It's a one day thing. It's gonna cost over 100K and it's gonna take over three, 400 hours of like manpower uh, from me and like my producer. Anything I can do to help? The main thing you can do to help me is get the big names to be like, hell yeah. Ray already said, what? hell yeah. I really want to ask XQC, but I've never talked to that man in my life other than he said, hey, I'm Felix. And then he like awkwardly uh, shook my hand once. You want me to ask him? <laughs> yeah. Or float the idea. That would be awesome. It's I fine like if he that. says no, but I would really regret not at least asking him at all. I don't even know if he's in this area. So what what do I get out of all of this? Uh, I guess the satisfaction of helping a friend do a cool idea. I have something else in mind. Oh God, you want to put your name on it? No, not on it. Oh God, you want to sponsor it? No, what? Why? Why would I want to give you money? That's true. Okay. All right. Wait. If you don't want your name on it, then what? What do you want? Uh, um, in the credits, can you say, like, I was an adv advisor slash consultant? Oh, yes, yes. We'll get your name on the credits reel, and then it'll start to get your name so you can branch out to other industries. Yes, yes, we can Thank put you in there. Yeah, that's exactly what I want, because I'm going to have conversations, and I'm going to, like, go into those conversations saying, like, oh, you see that Mario thing? That was all my idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I but that wouldn't that. affect you publicly, because yeah, yeah, you you'll know, still credit are... behind the scenes, not in yeah, front of the scenes. Yeah, behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And you probably wouldn't even know I was doing it. Either. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, all right, sounds good. Ah, that's all I need. I oh, I but yeah, I'm trying to get a bunch of big names that are in LA. I feel too nervous to like ask people to fly in for a one day event. Oh yeah, I've been told that like if they like the idea enough, they'll just be down anyway. But I'm not too sure. If they'd be down to fly um, in for a one day event. So let's so just get the biggest a names lot in of LA. people tend to time their trips for events. So like your event could just be one of many things. And the, again, the worst thing they say is no, right? Oh yeah. One of the ideas floated was have it near TwitchCon so that people are just going to naturally be in the area. Uh... Are you familiar with the concept oh, with the game one, two switch? Uh, on the Switch? Yeah, yeah, one, two, Switch for the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I am familiar. Uh, are you familiar with how at the beginning of each game, there's like a really like cute little tutorial video? Yeah. All right. Uh, something that we, uh, I really want to do, but it's going to take a lot of resources. I want to mm -hmm. film these kind of tutorial videos for every single event. And I want to like, a month in advance, rent a warehouse, and then get a bunch of like other streamers, maybe our friends that are smaller, to cameo in these. Ready. Like, oh, like Celine is Ready. filming herself doing this video, and then it's like a really cute little tutorial. Because this is a lot of money and effort in a one day event, and I may as well go all out to make every single part of it really good. So instead of me, the announcer, being like, here's how you play this, uh, this mini game, if we had a video like this, and like, oh my god, Celine's there! Ay, ay, ay. And everyone just like sees Celine acting out the game in a kind of cute, funny way. Uh, it it'll like leave a massively good impression. But then the idea of now getting a warehouse and getting like 10, 12 people to cameo, fly in on the same day and film and get it all together because managing streamer logistics is beyond infuriating. Sounds very difficult, but I have to do it. Now that I've had the idea and I, I've, I acknowledge that it's a good idea, I have to do it. I have to. I can't not do it. I'd just be too upset about what could have been. So you want to help me get 10 people to come film stuff on the same day? Uh, Actually, I don't think it'll be that hard. Like, I can probably like do it. the small streamers? You don't need my help for that. Yeah, I, I probably have, have enough clout for that. Yeah. I mean, it's the big streamers that you need help with, right? Yes. Also, um, yeah, I can probably say this publicly. I don't think it really matters. 
I don't think it's uh -huh. something that has to be that private. Um, I a lot of the people I'm interested in are uh, like related to YouTube. Yeah. And I'm scared if Twitch won't like that. Maybe they won't care um, because they're pretty popular anyway. Yeah, I mean they won't love it, but if the event is on Twitch. I yeah, it'll, it'll so. still be views for them. Hopefully, they don't care. Yeah. I I wonder if they'll be like really salty. Like, no, no, you can't have that person because that person's streaming on YouTube and they left us. I wonder if that'll uh, happen. I, I've never heard of Twitch being petty. Is that sarcasm or real? When's when's the last time Twitch has been petty about anything? Oh, uh, okay, I understand. Okay, well, anyway, I... Uh... Oh, someone I was really interested in, but I don't think this person's realistic. Uh, there's two people that are... I'm, I'm very interested in, but are not realistic. I was curious your opinion. Yeah, okay. Okay, one is Tyler1. Okay. And the other one is Jerma. Okay. What do you think? What do you think are the odds they are down to participate in this kind of thing? The worst thing they can do is say no, but I really doubt you'll get Tyler one. <laughs> okay, I have great news. Okay. After about 20 minutes of this, I am now an aim beast. I'm ready to play Valorant. Okay, have fun. Huh. Oh, I mean, what are you? What are you doing right now? I told you, I'm popping off as Jake the Dog from the TV show Adventure Time. <laughs> right. <laughs>